Um, what we wanted to do in this video is to tell you a little bit about uh, how the data is collected, maybe how um, it's read and where to find the data for our project. So here we're starting at the homepage in Agwater Soil Solutions and right here at the top, if you click on our projects, it'll take you to a list of projects. This project here on the left, this is just a sample project and it kind of gives you an idea what a sample or what a project would look like as it got more data collected into it. This one here is the one I want to focus on today, which is the Resig 6 project. And we'll click on the view project here. Each of these areas, they have soil probes and soil uh, data associated with them. So what I wanted to show, uh, show you guys real quick is how the soil monitor data uh, where, where to look at it and um, how to read it a little bit. So if once you pick, get to the area that you are uh, interested in, you can click on the soil monitor, uh, click here button, and it will bring up a graph that displays uh, several different uh, data metrics. So how do we look at these graphs? We, the, uh, the way that the soil probes work is they are a 48 inch probe. And you can see here at the top of the graph where it illustrates there's 12 different sensors uh, represented by different colors up here at the top of the graph. And they all are placed uh, uh, every four inches along the length of the probe. So you get 12 of them that go down to a total depth of 48 inches. And each one of these takes its own reading at its own depth. And it takes those readings for four different metrics or for three different metrics. One of them is moisture. The other is electroconductivity and the third is temperature. We're gonna have our agronomist, Neil Faringer give an explanation of how to read these, uh, uh, these data sets here in just a second, but we wanted to make sure that um, you knew how these graphs are to be read. So at the top, if you want to, right now, we have the data um, selected or unselected, so you can see the graph for the four inch layer of the soil. And anytime you put your, your mouse over the top of in uh, along the line of the of the data set, it will tell you the date and the time that the reading occurred that you're looking at. As what you see over here on the y-axis is the percentage moisture reading. This does not give you a, a volume of water reading. It just gives you a percentage of moisture where zero being total air and, and 100% being 100% water, 100% saturation. So what we're really looking here is a change in moisture, not necessarily a volume of moisture. And so what, what we can see, for example, is on September 29th, um, we had a, a, a high increase of uh, moisture at this date and time. And, and so that's just in general how to read the graph. So Neil, take it away. So we have three different functions that the AquaSpy probe is measuring, three different parameters in our soil. soil moisture, soil conductivity, and soil temperature. The uh, first one here, we'll start with the moisture. So as it was explained, this is a percentage of moisture in the soil. With this extended period of dry weather, you can see that over um, a period of time from September 17th to the 29th, about midday, the moisture continued to decrease. It uh, decreases uh, here we'll see this low point, uh, that's 12.30 a.m. It's, um, so that's overnight. Then it comes up um, in the early morning as moisture rises up by capillary action uh, in the profile. But then it significantly increases from 26% uh, to um, over 50% on the 29th when we added water. We irrigated for uh, up to about three hours, then we shut it off overnight, then uh, added, finished the processed water, the cleaned water um, the next day. And so then it's been slowly decreasing um, from that point. If we add the eight inch depth at this point in time, uh, it was a little higher moisture, which you would expect when, um, but then you can also see as we added that second batch of water, we got an increase down to the eight inch depth. If we add the 12 inch depth, um, it did not reach to that level. And we want to, and we'll go 16, it's, it's a slowly declining line as well. So the goal here is, is to keep the moisture in the top two feet because that's where the grouse roots are at. And that's what we want to primarily 
uh, encourage the growth of is the native grasses that are there or introduced grasses, improved grasses. So this is uh, the Alcospy is exactly doing as far as soil moisture what we wanted it to do. Let's move on to electroconductivity. Uh, that is um, a electroconductivity. Uh, sometimes you'll see it listed as EC um, or conductance. And what that is, is the measure of salts in the soil. And uh, as you can see that it fluctuates throughout the day, it's kind of reversed from the moisture content. As the moist soil dries, the conductivity goes up. Um, and so as we got over here to the 29th, when we added the water, the conductivity greatly decreased. Uh, salts in the soil are made up of calcium, magnesium, sodium, um, ammonia, ammonium, NH4, uh, potassium, nitrates, chlorides, sulfates. Those are all ions. Some of them are positive charged ions and some of them are negative charged ions. Uh, if you have distilled water, which has no ions in it at all, it will not conduct electricity. So the more ions in the soil, the more uh, conductivity there is. Um, plants uh, have been studied as far as their salt conductivity or their tolerance. And uh, say corn is not as salt tolerant as alfalfa, which is not as salt tolerant as the native wheat grasses that are present at this site. Uh, as far as what we want to look at, uh, we'd be alarmed as uh, this, our measurements are in uh, the units of millimoles per centimeter. Um, anything would grow here with a conductivity of uh, 0.5 or less, even one or less millimole per centimeter. If we started getting up to two panel beans, uh, corn, you would start getting yield loss in that. You get to uh, three or four, alfalfa would stop growing. Certain grasses uh, that are more salt sensitive would quit growing. So with the, the very low water uh, conductivity that we applied here, there would be no buildup of salts in this soil. Um, again, I'm going to now add the eight inch depth and the salts are more, um, don't vary as much throughout the day. Uh, the 12 inch, um, this is what you would expect to see in a dry land range situation where uh, the salts increase with depth. And we'll add the 16 inch, uh, we get to 20 inches. They continue to increase with depth, which is normal because every year there's grass growing and the salts are not able to be leached uh, real deep. Now you look at the 24 inch depth, now the salts have stopped increasing and they, um, I've gone all the way to 48 inches and you can do the same thing and they will, um, begin to decrease with depth once we hit 20 inches. So I'll check those, uh, take those away. But yes, this is very normal right here. Um, again, when we added the water, then the conductivity went down. And uh, so let's move on to temperature. There is um, quite a range of temperatures in the top four inches, just from the daily he uh, heating. Um, and then it cools off overnight. If you add the uh, eight inch depth, the variation um, is a lot less and the 12 inch depth is even less deviation from high minimum to maximum. Uh, 16 becomes pretty flat, you go to 20 inches and it is starting to cool off because our average daily temperature is um, decreasing over a period of time. Temperature, there's really no um, issues with it that uh, the application of this water would cause. Um, it's just a natural thing. Eventually uh, it will freeze and depends upon how cold we get over the winter, um, what the temperatures do. Um, so if you can come to this site over the winter, if the ground's frozen, you'll see that it's actually warmer um, at depth, say at 48 inches than it is certainly in the top foot. 